My name is Brittany Charlton, and I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the Harvard School of Public Health and Boston Children's Hospital. Millions of women around the globe have used oral contraceptives, and they remain the most prescribed medication among women of reproductive age in the U.S. Although numerous studies have weighed the risks and benefits, it's only now, 50 years after they were introduced, that the long-term risks can be studied. When they were made available, there was no process in place to assess long-term health consequences. This is one of the main reasons for establishing the Nurses' Health Study. For this particular analysis, we examine the association between oral contraceptive use and mortality using 36 years of follow-up with women in the Nurses' Health Study. This prospective cohort was established in 1976 when more than 120,000 married female registered nurses complete a mailed questionnaire including detailed information on their oral contraceptive use, all of which was used by the early 1980s. Follow-up questionnaires continue to be sent to participants. This is a particularly exciting opportunity in the sense that our cohort now includes three times the number of participants and 18 times the number of endpoints as the next largest study that's examined this issue. In our population of about 120,000 women, about half used oral contraceptives at some point in their lives. And between 1976 and 2012, we recorded about 31,000 deaths. Our main finding was that all-cause mortality did not significantly differ between women who had ever used oral contraceptives and those who had not. So the takeaway message is that women who used oral contraceptives through the early 1980s can be reassured that this is unlikely to impact their mortality. When looking at the cause of death, oral contraceptive use was associated with certain causes, including increased breast cancer deaths and violent accidental deaths, as well as decreased ovarian cancer deaths. Additionally, we found that longer duration of use was more strongly associated with certain causes of death, including increased breast cancer deaths and decreased ovarian cancer deaths. Longer time since last use was also associated with certain outcomes, including more violent and accidental deaths. The elevated violent and accidental deaths could be due to increased intimate partner violence, but this couldn't be assessed. And with respect to suicides, the effect of oral contraceptive use on mental health is really unclear in the literature, but actually some of the most robust studies show a small and protective effect. One of the strengths of our study is that we're able to adjust for dozens of covariates. In particular, our study was unique in that we were able to adjust for other exogenous hormone exposures, in particular hormone therapy use throughout a woman's entire life. Our results just pertain to those first and second generation oral contraceptives. So those are defined by the type of progesterone that's in the oral contraceptive, as opposed to drugs that are now on the market that now have new generations of progesterone. So the third and fourth generation are now most commonly used. Um, and those drugs also have lower estrogen dosages. So. The benefits of using oral contraceptives shouldn't be forgotten. They decrease countless ailments and drastically reduce maternal mortality. Nonetheless, it's imperative to understand the impact of exogenous sex steroids and contraceptives so that women can make informed decisions.